Hello, welcome to this 1PLM webinar on solid edge subdivision modelling. So what we're going to have a look, to look at today is subdivision modelling. Um, if you've seen any, anything recently, you'll understand the portfolio. So the subdivision modelling sits within the mechanical design portfolio. So just a quick run if you're not aware of this, is that the solid edge um, probably about five years ago, it used to be pretty much mechanical design with a little bit of simulation and manufacturing and data management from Team Center. Recently, we've had the addition of electrical design that includes schematics, harnesses, and even PCB collaborator tools. Also expanded the simulation tools. So previously we had some basic simulation tools. Now we've got Flow EFD that allows us to do air and fluid analysis. Manufacturing has also been improved. Um, technical publications. Um, we received this in 2017 um, with the addition of solid edge tech pubs, allows us to do single or multi page documents. Data management has also been enhanced recently with, uh, with the addition of the solid edge built in data management. Came in SD9, um, has improved every version since. We've also got our cloud based collaboration. So here we've got our solid edge portal, allows us to go and share files with customers where they can look, section, and measure different components. But what we're, look, what we're looking at today is the mechanical design with the subdivision modeling. So how much time could you save? So if you're looking at creating complex surface models, such as the one on, on the side, we're going to spend time. And then we're going to go, I might, I might, want, want, I might make, make a little change on here, small change, little change. And quite often it's going to fall over. And we have to go and spend a lot of time figuring out what feature hasn't rebuilt properly. So. Um, Using this subdivision and um, subdivision modeling tool, um, how fast, how much faster do you think we could make this? 50 to 100 percent faster, so almost twice as fast. Over twice as fast, so two to three times faster. 200 to 300 percent faster, three to 400 percent faster. Obviously, depending on the complexity of the model, depends on how much quicker we're going to go. But just have a think, um, a think while you're watching this presentation, and we'll come back to this at the end. So subdivision modeling, what is it? So this is a modeling technique that generates a stylized body using a polygon cage to control its shape. So we don't physically touch the body itself. Um, we physically just control the cage. The body is generated through a set of rules that are repeatedly applied to each polygon vertex edge, um, polygon face edge or vertex to generate the next level of polygons, vertices, and their connectivity. This will make a bit, a bit more sense later when we see this in action. Most common implementation through Pixar's open source surface division platform that you probably recognize here from Toy Story. Subdivision modeling within Solid Edge is an intuitive freeform modeling tool set that helps you develop unique products based on organic shapes. The technology makes it easy for anyone, even those who aren't experienced in computer aided design technology, to work with sophisticated design software to develop high quality advanced shapes. Similar technology has been proven in the, in the in entertainment industry. Subdivision modeling has been adopted to suit the manufacturing industry needs by embedding it within Solid Edge itself. Subdivision vision modeling is, is an easy way to create complex geometry which can be subdivided to give shape flexibility. By continuously manipulating, subdividing an initial shape, we can add greater levels of detail to your design. So we can see the designs we've got. The picture bottom left on there, you can see we've got a single face, and that is being split up to additional faces, so we can add additional control on there. The resulting complex organic shape, both solids and surfaces, are high quality, editable, and suited for use by all downstream consumers of the CAD such as some of the stuff we've seen on the portfolio just a while ago. Subdivision modeling use example. So um, quite often we'll get sketches from industrial designers um, and we can get a rough idea what it's going to look like. Um, but if we actually use the subdivision, we can very quickly create these into useful parts that we can then view within the overall assembly of that component or within other components. Um, we can actually take these sketches, if we've got orthographic views, top, right, front, um, etc. And we can place those on sketches in Solid Edge and use those as a guide for creating this subdivision model. So really useful little way to go and create those. So you can see one here where I found a, a little option, the one on the right, and I've taken that in. Five minutes on Solid Edge, 
Um, I've created the subdivision, gone out, created a couple of synchronous cylinders to represent the wheels, and we've got a rough shape, um, maybe not quite exactly the same, but spending a little bit more time or knowing the sizes would mean um, well, I'd be able to create that much more accurately on there. Subdivision modelling um, within Solid Edge makes it easy to work with complex surfaces. The application generates a stylized body using a polygon cage to control its shape, allowing you to quickly capture and refine these concepts. This provides a high level of control over a design's form than when using polygons alone. Users select from a variety of primitive shapes, such as box, cylinder, sphere, or torus, to create the first cage, and then we can manipulate this form to modify its shape. So we go and just choose whichever one we want is going to be closest. Quite often it's going to be box. You'll see that in the example. That's a great little example that we've got on there. So now what we're going to do, we're going to jump into Solid Edge. So I'm going to take us straight into Solid Edge here. And we're going to see, so within the surfacing section, um, you can see I've got my subdivision modeling. So that's going to take me into a specific environment. And now I'm going to decide my primitive shape that I'm going to use on here. So for this one, I'm going to create a box. And I can go through and choose these sizes. So we can see these sizes that we want on here, and we can go and change these. So for this one, um, we're, uh, we're making a, a bicycle saddle, roughly to start off with. So width, we're going to go 150, and length, um, let's go, let's go 250 on here on the size. And then I'm just going to right click to confirm on there. So we've got the shapes that we want. Um, not sure how many kind of options we want on here. So we've got all these different surfaces and we can use these to decide the exact shape that we want on there. So what we're going to do first, um, because this is going to be symmetrical, we've actually got an option where we can start a symmetry and tell it where that symmetry is going to be. And then we're going to say which side we're going to work on. So I'm just going to confirm on there. And now we've got symmetry. See, so stop. So it means that we're working in the symmetry mode on there. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to select these faces, which I'm going to move in. So I'm going to drag these in, and we're going to get a rough idea of the shape. That's not doing exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, going to, um, I'm going to select those two faces. Notice we can select a point, an edge, or a face on here. And we're going to split those faces. And we're going to split those. So I'm going to split that one and that one. And you can see that has created those additional options. Um, the, the number is the amount of lines we've got, so I'm just going to create one on there, and that's then going to split that surface. So that means now if I do, if I go in and select these this surface on here, I can go and drag this in and start creating the shape. So you should be able to see quite quickly how this is going to start to look pretty much like the shape that we're after. So now we've got that shape as it is. Um, we haven't really got the rounding quite the way that we want. Um, and this surface probably needs splitting as well. So we'll get very used to splitting these surfaces, deciding which way it's going to split. And then that is going to go and split those into multiple surfaces. And we can then make changes to those. So quite often with a bike saddle, we're going to have a little kind of dimple in the back section. So I want to specify on there. That didn't get me exactly what I want. So I'm just going to select those. So I want to select the points and those edges. And that's going to allow me to go and create a dimple on there. So I'm going, to, I'm, going to take that, I'm going to take that dimple style shape down on there. Now, now I'm, I'm going to have a look at some of the rounding options that we can create on here. So currently we've actually got, so this, this edge on here we want, want quite a large round. So I'm just going to fence select that. I can go to blend or I can right click. A couple of different ways of getting to my blend tool. Really nice way. And we can decide what kind of rounding we're going to have on these options. So I can see I've got some rounding on there, but because I've got these top those top edges, it's not looking quite right. So I'm going to finish that, and then now I'm going to do I'm going to actually go and do this again with these options. So as soon as we select those, we can see that has that has fixed that issue that we had on there. Um, and while we're doing this, we can actually go and select other edges that we may want and any other points that that we may want to choose to add these same blending options on here. So if I click on that edge, we'll see the front, but we've missed this corner again. So I want to select that corner and that corner to make sure we get rid of that option. I'm happy with that blend on there. Uh, I'm not happy with these edges. We can also actually just fence select to add some additional ones. So very quickly, we're starting to, to create the nice rounds on there. I'm just going to come back out of the blend command on there. So some other features. Um, quite, quite often, we're not actually going to end up with quite the blends that we want. 
but sometimes we might just have to go and rotate a face to get it the way that we want. So if I go and select that face and just drag that face down, you'll see that's going to change that shape on there. And we're going to shrink that and we're going to, uh, and we're going to shrink that down. So I'm just going to take that down 10 degrees on there to get that one. So rather than doing that one, I'm actually just going to spin this face as well. So we can do lots of different options on here to go move and drag these faces. So I'm just going to drag that one in 15 degrees on there. And to match it, just to make it not so it doesn't look quite so wrong, I'm just going to move this one in just a little bit as well. So we can carry on using the the, uh, the little tools that I'm showing you to get the shape, to get the to get the different kind of shapes that we want on here. So I'm just going to spend a couple more minutes and just re and and just refine this a little bit. So over here, I'm just going to drag the back shape in on that. That's the kind of shape that we that we that we're looking at on that. And if we need any of these, so I might want this this face here, so I can kind of drop this front down a little bit, because at the moment that's a little bit uh, a little bit too high. So again, I'm going to split that face, um, split it so it's going along that edge. I'll stick with that with those default settings on that. Okay, so now we've now we've split that. We can go and move these several different ways. So I can rotate it, or I can just select the elements, and that's just going to drag that down on there a little bit. It's kind of shape that I want. It's a little bit, a little bit high there. So over here, I'm going to select these and just drag these down a little bit as well on there to get that shape the way that we want on there. Also got this face angled as well. So this was, this was very purposeful. So here we can do this several different ways. We can do that rotate option, or we can just drag those elements. So I'm just going to drag those in five mil to get the kind of shape that we want. We can spend more time getting that exactly how we want. Another little trick sometimes that I do is I leave like an element of slightly flat ones to make sure that we get the curvature correctly. But what I'm going to do on here, I'm just going to go and just make sure that we've got those blends set to three on there to make sure we've got a nice transition across the top on there. <coughs> so we've got a nice smooth transition going across there. So now we've got the shape using the subdivision tools. We're actually going to come out of the subdivision tools and we're going to use some of our traditional tools. So within here, um, we can't use our synchronous tools. If you know what synchronous is, allows us to create stuff quickly. We need we, we need to create a a ordered model. So what I'm going to do on here, I'm going to create a, a body which I want to use to cut the rough shape of the bottom of here. So I want to start on here. I'm going to create some different elements. Um, so normally we have it. It goes quite low here to support where your legs are, and then something like that is the shape. And I'm just going to enclose that off, just with a just with a sketch going along there. And I'm just going to turn that into a solid. So with that section, I'm going to turn that into a uh, into a solid going in both directions, just slightly wider than the saddle. And now I can go and use one of my boolean commands. So I'm going to do a um, I do a subtract. So our target is our option on there. We're using that as the tool, and that's going to cut that away. I'm then going to use that design body. I'm just going to convert that to construction. So if we go into an assembly, it's not going to show in the assembly. So that is just going to be that design body. So we've got our part now. So this is normally going to be some kind of plastic part. So we can use our thin wall command. We can decide how thick this is going to be. So we're going to have that three mil. And we have that face as the as the as the face that we're going to remove, and that's then going to turn that into a thin wall component. So we can now go and add whatever kind of traditional features we need on there. And last thing I want to do is turn that into a construction, um, um, sorry, solid body. So we've now got a usable part. We can go and add other components within there that we've got on there. We could add additional features such as relief and cutouts and stuff. But you can see how we've got that as a nice quick option on there. Okay, so let's have a summary of what we've done. So easy to use yet powerful stylized design tools, intuitive freeform modeling to create these stylized shapes, allows us like faces, edges, drag, rotate, lots of different tools. It's directly within the SolidEdge environment, so we don't have to load a separate program. We can do it directly within SolidEdge itself, much faster than traditional surfacing modeling techniques. Um, for that saddle, obviously slightly different one showing on there, but would would 
we would probably have to create several different sections by rails and different um, options to get that shape how we want it. Where subdivision has allowed us to create that very quickly. So why do we need subdivision modeling? Um, it facilitates an intuitive stylized shape and advanced subdivision model creation. It enables unique product development based on organic shapes. We can rapidly conceptualize ideas with ease and adapt to change. So if we get a review, somebody wants, wants us to change it, we can go back into our subdivision modeling area, make a change. Any of the features will then rebuild on top of that. It provides an intuitive conceptual design for everyone from both no novices to experts. So this is a little extract on the right here from a guy who's used Solid Edge for since the very start, since about 1995. So this guy did a test. Um, he's used um, the surfacing, doing quite advanced stuff for over 10 years, and he had to play with this tool for about two weeks. And he found that creating the part in the subdivision tools, it took him about 20% of the time of the traditional history-based part on there. So how much time could you save? After seeing this presentation, what do you think now? So we've got all the options on there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take those away and show the ones that I think. Depending on the complexity of the part, maybe more, maybe less, but somewhere between two and 400% quicker if, you, if you're using this tool. So it allows you to get that concept. It means that you don't spend a lot of time and then you've got to waste all that time um, and almost rebuild it again with it. You can do all those changes. You can get your concept as it is, and then you can go and use um, use your traditional modeling methods if that's the way that you want your final model to be created. But it gives you a really, really quick, um, uh, a nice tool for doing those conceptual designs. So here we are. What version of Solid Edge do we need to get these tools? So you can see here, we've got all the different tools. Um, I've just plonked these on the ones we've got. So if you've got Solid Edge Premium or Solid Edge Classic, Solid Edge Classic tends to be like the, the standard one that, that most people have uh, because we get the addition of KeyShot um, uh, with, with it, um, within there. So um, yeah, so that's the version that we've got that in. So if you make sure you've got one of those versions, you will have the Solid Edge modeling tools. Okay, thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions, um, Email me chris.morgan at 1plm.com um, and I'll be able to answer your questions hopefully. Thank you very much.